Hello, everybody. Hey, you know what? I was just standing here thinking about one of the oldest and most reliable instruments that's been used by wayfarers, seafarers, aviators. And you know, it's interesting. This instrument has no power source, doesn't need electricity, doesn't need a vacuum pump. It's not electronic and it never fails us. Boy, that almost sounds too good to be true. What the heck is that? Well, look here on the screen, folks. That is the magnetic compass. And you are back at the Epic Flight Academy in our instrument rating course. I'm Mike Thompson, and we wanna talk about that mag compass today. Now, when we talk about that mag compass, remember, view these videos in parallel to the content that you find in Epic's online course. And thirdly, please review this with your flight instructor. Now, just like the pedostatic and gyroscopic instruments, we have reviewed the magnetic compass in the private pilot course, and you can link to those videos. What we want to do here in the instrument rating course is just dig a little bit deeper into that magnetic compass where we know the FAA expects the instrument rated pilot to understand it a little more deeply. Now, I'd like you to take a look at this cross section. In the cross section picture here, you see this expansion unit. Now, that expansion unit there allows the instrument to compensate for changes in density and temperature, really mostly for changes in temperature. Remember, inside this case is filled with fluid. Why? Because when you look at that compass card, you see how it's sitting up on a pivot point? Yep, this is all review. On the left side of our diagram, we see the lubber line and the glass lens at the front. Up at the top, or uh, I'm sorry, down there at the bottom, we see a filler hole so we can get the liquid into this unit. Up at the top, we see an electrical power supply. What? I thought you said this thing didn't... No, nah, no, that's correct. It does not need any power. That little power supply will, will, will power a tiny little light bulb. You see it there in the upper left. And that just aids me in reading the magnetic compass at night. Also notice in the bottom of the cutaway, we see some compensating magnets. Now, I think you remember what those were for. There is a compass error called deviation. We'll review that again quickly. And the airframe mechanic uses those compensating magnets to correct for deviation. So speaking of errors, what are they? Again, we're not going to go through these in detail because that would be a repeat of what we've already talked about. But you can see them on the screen here. We start with variation. We talk about deviation, magnetic dip, oscillation, northerly and southerly turning error, and acceleration error. But let's take a look at them just to review. Why do we have variation? Well, you see on the picture of the globe here, the green dot is the geographic North Pole. The red dot is the magnetic North Pole. Imagine connecting a line from the green dot to the red dot and just running it all the way down the surface of the Earth. If you were to fly your aircraft directly along this line, there would be no variation. But if you're flying east or west of it, you will have some magnetic variation. Review those details in our earlier video on variation. Deviation, remember, anything in the aircraft that can either create its own magnetic field or disrupt the Earth's magnetic field may cause that compass to swing a little bit. That's where that airframe mechanic is going to use those compensating magnets 
and end up printing out for us this compass deviation card. And you can see that on the screen here. That little white card posted immediately below that magnetic compass shows its deviation. Well, what kinds of things might cause that? Oh, just the battery itself, turning on the alternator, turning radios on and off, those things will cause deviation. And that card helps us correct for those. Magnetic dip. Now, this is a very nice drawing to depict how magnetic dip works. You might hear the term inclination. And is that the same as magnetic dip? Yes. When we talk about inclination, we're talking about those magnets inside this compass on an incline. Well, what would cause them to incline? The Earth's magnetic flux fields come out of the poles, surround the Earth, and go back into the pole. Now, you can see those flux lines here. At the equator, those flux lines are basically parallel to the Earth's surface. And you see our little magnet here? It is also parallel to the Earth's surface. It has no inclination. Now, notice as we get closer and closer to the magnetic pole, those flux lines start to curve. That magnet aligns itself to those flux lines and it starts to incline as those flux lines dip down. That's called inclination or magnetic dip. Now, notice as we get up to the magnetic North Pole, look how steep that inclination is because that magnet wants to keep itself aligned to those flux lines. That is inclination. That gives us magnetic dip. Now, the northerly and southerly turning errors are shown here. Because of that dip or inclination of those magnets, if I'm flying on the equator and I'm headed east or west, that magnetic compass is going to behave itself and indicate accurately. But the closer I get to either pole, the more I'm going to need to correct for that inclination. And that gives us our memory aid in the northern hemisphere, UNOS, that stands for undershoot north, overshoot south, and in the southern hemisphere, ONUS, overshoot north, undershoot south. And this diagram gives us a good idea of how much to undershoot or overshoot. And I want you to review that in detail with your flight instructor because you're going to practice this in the FTD and in the airplane. And our next error is acceleration error. And here's a real nice example of it. Again, we've studied it earlier, so we won't go into great detail. As you accelerate the airplane, that compass card will tip because remember, that card is sitting on a pivot point. And as you decelerate, uh, the card will also tip. That's acceleration, deceleration error. So, folks, that's a review of the magnetic compass and its key errors. Join us next time.